And now we're going to see the child who's the same age as Hudson, but she has more language. And the mother is trying to talk with her about what her choice is for what she will play. Because children on the autism spectrum don't usually use clear signals to communicate their wants and needs, you might be tempted to make decisions for them. But avoid doing this because it can delay language development. Do you find that? That you sometimes make the decision for the child because it's too much work to get them to tell you what they want to do? Yeah. We think that's the right thing to do. We think it's going to help them. But in the end, they come to rely on you to do that, don't they? And if we want to foster, how many of you work, want to work on your children being a little more independent? Then they have to be able to tell people what they want, what their choice is, don't they? Yeah. What would you like to play today? Ask your child what she wants to do by providing some suggestions of her favorite activities and then wait for a verbal response or nonverbal gesture of her decision before proceeding. The idea is for you to encourage your child to communicate more. We have our dollhouse or our Barbie house or we could do some coloring and cutting or we could pretend doctor, or pretend tea party, or ice cream shop. What are you thinking right now? A lot of choices. That's our choices. <laughs> Too many choices, huh? Why do you think we do that sometimes? We want them to know they have lots of choices. They want them to know they have lots. Mm -hmm. She's not, the girl's not giving any indications what she wants, so yeah. she just keeps hoping she'll come up with something that she wants to do. Yeah. So it can be kind of overwhelming, isn't it? How many choices do you want to give your child? Christine, two? And two choices that we know they might like, huh? Or there might be a reason to have one they don't like. Let's talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. Is there something you want to play today? Ice cream. You want to play ice cream shop? Okay, we no, can do that no, after ice cream. Just ice cream. Just ice cream? Okay. Okay, so she does eventually get an answer from her, doesn't she? But how might she do it differently next time? Douglas, what would you say to her? Uh, I would say slow down. Take a breath. Yeah, and how would you, let's say that Patricia is your child and you're giving her, you're offering her choices. How would you say it to her? Um, you can turn to pr Patricia. I would say Trish. Well, which, she doesn't like Patricia. Oh, uh, Trish, I'm sorry. <laughs> Trish. Trish, would you like to play board game or go get ice cream? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did Douglas do? Hmm? He slowed down. He slowed down. And limited choices. And gave the choice, and then what did he do? This was so key. He waited, and it might be a longer wait than that in many times. Mm -hmm. So when you're giving your child a choice, we saw in this vignette, the child had a lot of language, right? So she, she used a lot of language, maybe too much language in terms of giving her choices. But let's say we're dealing with Demetrius again in this time. So do you, um, how do you usually give him a choice of what he's going to do? Um, for eating, I will usually hold things up. Uh-huh. You know, Excellent. Can you show us? This is going to be your child this here, and she does. This is Demetrius. Mm -hmm. Demetrius, time for snack. You want banana, orange? Which one? Good choosing. Oh. Okay. So what did she do? What did she demonstrate? Very simple. Simple. Apple, orange. Orange. Held them up in her line, his line of sight, and I waited for the response. And waited for the response, and the response was just had to point. So she reinforced that right away. Did she choose two things that she likes? Um, 
like as a parent, would I do that? Mm-hmm. You're giving I, would, your... I would probably choose two things I know my child would eat, mm-hmm. and either one are okay with me mm-hmm. at that time. Mm-hmm. So she had, she can choose one or the other. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's where you're using the concrete object there. If you happen to have it, we happen to have it. Um, just a little point I might make: if you are had the banana, would you want to offer the whole banana or the whole orange? Um, I probably would because my child would eat the whole thing. But maybe some yeah, kids no, lose. but I mean, what what do you lose the advantage of being able to do? I'll oh, ask him again and we'll make more choices. Yes. Okay, how many of you use pictures with your kids? Some of you? Okay, principals to use them quite a bit. So with Demetrius, you probably do quite a little bit too, right? Because he doesn't speak at all and your child doesn't speak. He's very, very, very limited verbal. Mm -hmm. So how do you use the pictures? Do you teach them what the pictures are first? Um, we usually teach them. There's a process. Uh -huh. We have to get them to that. We have to get them to recognize what's one or the other. Yeah. Uh, especially with food. Yeah. Um, and then we so he has to recognize the picture. That's right. Okay. So, so Douglas, come on here for a minute, because I know you know how to do this. Right? Should we do this one, the ball? Okay. You're going to teach him the ball? The yep. ball, ball? Okay. Okay, so... Your child can be Marley, mm -hmm. and you're going to show us how you're going to teach him what the picture is. Okay. Correct? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. Okay. Ball. Can you say ball? Ball. 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 I mean, he has to get the ball, right? right? Okay, so what was effective about that? Pairing the picture with the object. Yeah, so you start with the object, the actual object, if you can, always, yeah. in teaching the word. But at some point, you may not have the objects, so you want to have the pictures. And so in this case, he's teaching what the picture represents. Excellent. Good. So let's say we've taught... Um, we've taught uh, Play-Doh, so we know what Play-Doh is. So then our activity choice for, would be for a child who doesn't speak. We've taught them both those things, then the next level those things go away. Um, do you want the ball or the Play-Doh? Which one, Marley? Ball, Play-Doh. Ball, and you said, buh, 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 buh. ball. Wow, you said the word ball. Here's the ball. Okay, so you might want to give them an opportunity to say part of the word, buh, buh, ball, which she did do. And I told her to wait. She didn't wait very long. <laughs> because a lot of times we get impatient, we want them to answer too quickly. So now, in this case, we know that Kim hates Play-Doh. She does not like the feel of that Play-Doh on her hands at all. So what we're trying to have you learn to say is no for that, OK? OK, Kim, do you want the Play-Doh? No. No. No Play-Doh. Yeah. Would you like the bubbles to play bubbles? Bubbles. OK. Bubbles. Awesome. Let's go get the bubbles. OK. All right. So at some point, you also want them to know how to say no so that they can say no to the options. So you're not every time giving them two choices. Depends what we're working on there. Does that make sense?